Tip number one is to find a school that supports you. There's a big difference between online resources and true boot camps. We like to think of online resources as being like books in a library, whereas a boot camp is a school. Not all support is created equal, so you should spend time thinking about what you need. Some people are okay with just having recorded lectures and a, and a self-directed environment. Others want at least some amount of live instruction and interaction. And then by far, the best form of instruction is one-on-one. -on -one. Um, and that's proven to deliver faster learning and better attention over a long period of time. At this point, every school should be able to publish outcomes and tell you how their graduates have been doing. If they've been around for more than a few months, they'll have classes that have graduated. And you should look for what their graduation rate was and what their placement rate was. And you should make sure their definitions for those are clear. You should be able to look at a school's outcomes and compare them to alternatives apples to apples. Tip number two, carve out time for your online course. Yeah, so if you're planning on enrolling in a, in a more part-time, flexible kind of a boot camp, it's really important to make sure you're aware of all of your other obligations. Um, so, so what I would recommend you do is you set up a Google Calendar before you go into the course and just block off all the time that you have to deal with your family, with your, your day job, your you know, other obligations in general, um, and just see what time you actually have left over to study. Uh, that, then be very vigilant about defending that time and making sure you're focusing on studying and, and it's not getting you know, taken away by birthday parties and weddings and things like that. So one thing I see that all successful students do, almost to a person, is they know when to reach out for help. They're, they're not afraid to admit when they don't know something and they, they know who to go to. So, uh, so make sure you know who, who you can work with at your boot camp if you get stuck. Um, you know, but once you've been trying to do something for 30 minutes and you haven't made any progress, it, it's time to call in some help. The, the environment that that you're studying in is, is very, very important. Um, if, if, you know, if, you're, if you're in a household full of people and everyone's running around, it's not a good time to learn how to code. Uh, I really recommend finding a, a nice quiet coffee shop or a co-working space or a library. Uh, just any place you could go to just get away from everything and, and just focus on this without any distractions. Tip number three, make the most of your support network. A coding bootcamp is a big life change and you really need a network of support that's gonna help you as you go through this process. That starts even before you start the bootcamp. So get buy-in from people in your life, from your friends and family. Make sure they know you're gonna be working really hard and that they're rooting for you. As you're going through the boot camp, really work closely with the staff that's there to support you and your peers in your cohort who are with you all day. These people are really the first level of technical support, of moral support, of helping you through the soft skills that you're going to need as you move into your first job as a developer. And of course, share the projects that you make with your friends. Show people what it is that you're doing and why it's important. If you made a virtual drum circle, then share that on Facebook so your friends can actually interact and play on it with you. Uh, tip number four, always be coding. And the only way to get better at writing code is to write more of it. Um, and there's a few ways to be able to do that. The first way is build projects. Um, anytime you've had an idea of something you've wanted to build, now is your chance to do that. An example of that is an app called Book It that some of our graduates built because they found it troublesome to find all these additional resources they were using in the bootcamp. So they built a tool that helped organize all of them. Another way to always be coding is to contribute to open source projects. People are always looking for new contributors and the best way to learn how to commit to a professional code base is to just do that without, you know, before you start your job. And then finally, uh, working through practice problems and the kind of real interview questions you're going to face is really, really valuable. There's tons of coding resources like CoderByte, HackerRank, Project Dueler that'll help you practice how to think through a technical challenge. So just spend some time, spend 15 minutes every day solving one problem and that's gonna go a long way. Tip number five, network aggressively. 
So when you graduate, you want to work with your careers team to make sure you have a targeted job search. That comes in many forms. Um, application materials are a big part of it. You want to make sure that your resume looks good, your LinkedIn looks good, but in addition to all of that, you really want to network like crazy. You're an online student, but you want to go offline too to network. So get yourself to meetups, get yourself to events, meet for coffee with folks who are in the industry. These are all really solid ways to build inroads to companies that you want to work at. The people you meet at meetup groups are often really receptive to connecting with you, whether it's on LinkedIn or whether it's connecting you to someone at their company. And we've seen a ton of opportunities come to our graduates and students that way. So in a way, networking is kind of like a shortcut to putting all of the work and effort into applying to a company, crossing your fingers, you already have a warm connection.